Nakari Thorpe here, here in the nation's capital, here on the lawns of the Aboriginal Tent Embassy, and I'm joined by uh, one of the Raleigh elders and one of the last surviving, well, the last surviving member of the Aboriginal Tent Embassy, Michael Anderson. Michael, it's been a massive day today. Can you t talk us through the day? Well, um, today is a day where you know we've had we we have to come to start saying enough is enough. Um, no more research has to be done. We've got the got our position now very well defined, and so what we have to do now is to educate our people in terms of what their legal rights are, um, both in the domestic sense as well as in the international arena. And um, what we have now is to show to the people in our communities that we have a solid foundation to begin to argue our rights and say that you know the laws that the white people are making in this country, the governments in particular, um, do not apply to us anymore because we are a sovereign independent people and we have always been that. And we just had to you know dig around a little bit to sort of ensure that we are on solid foundations. And um, and Marbo, now I understand why. It, the whole Australian society, white society, panicked when Mabo came down. It really didn't make it understandable in the first instance. But one of the things that we now understand, when you really go through the decisions, including all the other judgments, you know, the other decisions of the ju other judges besides Brennan, when you look at that, you realise that um, they were really in a conundrum. They got themselves into a position where they really had to work out how to do this, how to, what sort of decision do they make. And, um, of course, they realised that, like the Senate Committee on Standing Constitutional and Legal Affairs in 1983, um, the Federal Parliament Committee, they found that Aboriginal sovereignty was, a, was, a, uh, was in existence at the, time of the Federation, uh, at the time when they came here in 1788. And the Parliament in 1983 were told by that Senate Standing Committee on Constitutional and Legal Affairs that Aboriginal sovereignty did subsist, but it wasn't recognised by the legal system and the political system. So then we had to look at that and, and say, well, OK, um, they admit to being a, um, a foreign power yeah, over us, an occupying power. They use that term in that parliamentary committee um, report to the federal parliament. So we had to expand on that and find out what, what really did Mabo say. And so when you look at the fact that Mabo said yeah, that Aboriginal law and customs survive British sovereignty. Now, that's it in a nutshell. So we had to really sort of dig around and have a look at what did all this truly mean. And so, in essence, the High Court of Australia could not say that, yes, we recognise Aboriginal sovereignty. The moment they do that, the law of the land applies, and the law of the land is our law. Yeah? That means the High Court of Australia, the judges, had no right to make any decisions about this country. So what we have now is we have a confrontation between two laws in this country, and two recognised laws now by a common law system. And so what we need to do, we now advance what was said in the, in the National Parliament in that report, where they said it wasn't recognised by the legal system. Now it is recognised by the legal system. And that's what Mabo gave us. So that's what white people panicked about in this country, the, all the legal eagles all around this country, the farmers, the mining companies, and everyone else, because they realised that, hang on a minute, if we, if the Crown only gained radical title, but not, and its emphasis is on not, gain a beneficial radical title. And when you look at beneficial, beneficial means that you can recognise someone else owning the land, but you can ignore their ownership and use it for your profit and your, your, um, for your purposes, while at the same time recognising them, but you, be, you benefit and they can't do anything about it. That's what you call beneficial. Now, when, when you look at what the court said, the High Court said that the Australian, uh, the British did not gain a beneficial rate of title. So then how does the state governments in any, in any area in Australia gain a beneficial right to pass any laws about land, and if they did not have a beneficial right in the first instance, how then can they argue that our rights have been extinguished? Because the High Court of Australia, on that very point of land title, the High Court of Australia says that Australia holds a tenure of some kind.
So the High Court in Australia can't even say what type of tin they have. So we've got a real problem here. And the, we got the problem because we now have to educate our people what this means. They get a problem because they know where it's coming from. Mm. And they've got to hold on to it. How do they do that? Mm. And, um, you know, you are the organiser of this event. So yes. There's a few hundred that gathered here today. So there was camp. over 500, I'm told. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And you've just come back from marching up to Parliament House. Yeah. Um, and you're back now, everyone's kind of settled. Mm -hmm. What's the feeling like now? Well, a lot of people are starting to say, well, you know, okay, the challenge is now, how do we get the people to get out into the communities now and educate our people in the mass, you know, in those communities? Because, you see, it's no good of us talking from a city, okay? It doesn't work. You, you've got to get out there and tell the people what their position is. And um, we need to educate our people so that they can take back ownership. We have to empower the people in the communities on their own country. But the thing that we need to be careful of, and that is that when we exercise our sovereign rights, we exercise as that nation state. You know, I, can't, I can't go to Melbourne and say, I want to exercise my sovereign rights in Melbourne because I'm on someone else's country. And under Aboriginal law, I'm transgressing, you know, I'm, I'm going against our custom and tradition and our legal system. So what I have to do is I, have, I can do things in my own country. So if I treaty with that other nation and they give me access to their country and say I can do things, then I'm, I'm in a good position and we have a treaty around it. All right, great. Thank you so much, Michael, for your time. And that's all from us from the nation's capital for now. But please stay tuned online on our Facebook and Twitter and, of course, on television. Thank you.